left them uh, her something good that they can use uh, wow. to help their families and things of that sort. And uh, if you can do me a big favor and tell our friend Tabitha we say hey, hopefully sure she's listening. Sure and, and if she is, what's up, girl? <laughs> I got to hang out with Kenny. All right, Kenny, what you got, man? Final words, my brother. Final words. Uh, well, you know, in the Pledge of Allegiance, we say with liberty and justice for all. But it's, it's really sad to say that, you know, the color of justice is not black, it's not white, it's green. And you really can get as much justice as you can afford. So it's kind of like when your money runs out, so does your justice. And who do you call uh, when you have those situations? Uh, you know, the wealthy of the wealthiest can afford three, four hundred dollar hour attorneys. Michael Jordan can pay a million dollars a year for an attorney because it protects his other 99 million so it makes sense but who do we call the average everyday worker who doesn't have that that access who if something comes up they got to start searching and start uh, going into a financial hardship to handle a situation uh, so legal shield is actually there for people a lot of people don't even know that this service exists so i'm glad i had the opportunity to come out here and tell people that hey listen you know you don't have to be caught off guard you don't have to be uh caught with surprises in your life when when something comes down you can call legal shield you can have an attorney you actually have uh, that that power that to just imagine how empowered you can be just to say listen I got an attorney that can handle this situation I'm gonna turn it over to them and uh, you get that protection for you and your family you get your wills done for free uh, you know most people don't get their will done because it, they procrastinate we know death has no age attached to it and uh, wills cost anywhere from three hundred to two thousand dollars to get done so with a mem- with the legal shield membership you get that done for you and your spouse for free and it updated every year for free you get a traffic ticket have a lawyer go to court anywhere in the country and in canada go to court and fight that ticket for you uh we're not saying that we fix tickets but hey who you think going to have a more favorable outcome in court a traffic attorney or you right. so you get that access uh, and we provide a whole lot of other services uh, definitely would uh, reach out to you guys or you guys reach out to me and uh, give me some information uh i'll give you some information on uh, how the services can protect you my cell phone number again is 804 301 Seven seven two six again. That number is eight zero four. He had the audacity to ask me for my number. So, help me understand this one. I already know what I did, but what would you do? Would you give this individual your real number? Would you give him a fake number? Or would you tell him to go to you know where and to get out your face? So I say that to say, ladies, that we cannot complain that there is no guy that would give us attention because I myself can't even pump gas for $3.19 without somebody standing in my face. And again, just say, ooh, you look good. Kind of creepy. Don't like it. Next time, pay my gas. and You might could get a number. Not the real one, but a number. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. <laughs> Dating pool diva, what you got, girl? Um, I have two events that are coming up that I want to plug right now. I want to make sure um, that everybody comes out and um, supports the heart um, to heart um, event. Um, we're having a dating pool um, revolution a forum from four to seven on the twenty third. Um, at the Island Bistro, 1721 East Main Street. And earlier that day um, will be the Warm Hearts for the Homeless, which will be 1030 to 1130 at Monroe Park. That's near VCU, 620 West Main Street. Um, I want to make sure that everybody who can come out to those two events comes out, especially the homeless event. I want um, some people to be able to donate because right now I don't have any donations. I have like 14 volunteers, but I, I don't have any donations. So anyone that's willing and able to donate water, food, um, non-perishable items, clothing, socks, gloves, um, whatever you can give, you know, please give to this um, cause because it's a really good cause and it does make you feel good to give back to the homeless. You can inbox me if you're interested in that um, on Facebook, Author Charisma. And um, you can also check out the other event, the Heart to Heart um, Dating Pool Forum that we have once a month. Um, also, I have Valentine Heart to Heart Baskets. And in the baskets, you can have them custom made with jewelry, um, organic products, 
or my novels. I have five novels, and any of those novels can be in the basket. So, you know, if you're interested in that, again, I'm on Facebook, Author Charisma. Um, and that's basically all I have to say. Thank you for having me again. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys once a month, every last Monday of the month. I really enjoy being here. And we appreciate you being here with us, both of you guys. Appreciate it uh, for putting up with us, fellas. I know sometimes we can be uh, tough to deal with. I'll just leave it there. But yes, you yeah, but you guys, you guys hanging, you guys are good sports because, you, you know, I think the kind of dialogue that we have during the Diva Diaries is productive. Um, we sometimes get upset with each other and we shout, but it's always in love. And we agree to disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, and we're generally respectful. And that, I think, is ideal simply because I don't think we get a lot of that in our community. I think a lot of times we spend so much time cussing each other out and not showing each other love, even in discourse that we carry that in every relationship that we have not necessarily relationships you know romantic relationships just person-to-person relationships uh and i think that the diva diary segment that we do is very important uh because we show that men and women can have discussions uh we can be men y'all could be women and we can kind of fall along our gender lines, but we can also take the time to try to understand each other. And I think that's important. You know, I have with Marcus J. It's time for Carlton Banks to let us know why it's not unusual. What you got, bro? You know what? Today was very unusual for me because I got animated up in this piece. And I totally blame Marcus Johnson. It's his fault. He got me animated up in here. He brought in that military comment. I saw it on his page earlier today. I wanted to comment on it. I think, a matter of fact, I might have liked it, to be honest. The thing, the fact of the matter is, he got me heated. I'm not about to apologize for getting heated. Because you know what? They always say, I don't talk up in here. Guess what? I'm talking now, daggone it. And I'm going to get mad. I'm going to get loud. I'm going to carry it. How long is my song, by the way? How Just long? keep talking. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep talking. Keep talking. And you might have to loop this thing for right now. He got me hot and heated. Y'all over there, y'all laughing and joking and, and tripping and everything and whatnot, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, I ain't been this heated in a long, long time. Last time I got this heated, Ruben said something that was made me made me go off. And I ain't, I, uh, man, you got me in here hot. I'm, maybe it's this damn fleece jacket I got on. I don't know. It's, it's probably a tip job, yeah. It's, it's probably the We need a breeze up in this piece, for real. I miss those daggone windows. Look, I'm happy to be in a new spot. I hope there's a new spot. It's, it's, it's a lot brighter in here because um, we need to take out some of these light bulbs, for real, because I'm... I'm about blinding in one That's eye. A real rant you doing there, ain't I you? I mean, I'm being doing long, long rant, long rant. I ain't write this one down. I, but on the, on the end to end this though, I just hope Alexander is okay. Um, after his 700 mile, after his 700 mile trip, and um, you know what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Alexander and me might have to have a meeting. <laughs> and um. As long as they're kitty boxes and two right. kitty boxes and two houses, we all right. That's 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 the high see. You guys are killing you me. You know what? <laughs> You're killing me. Well, with another artist, I mean, I don't think he likes singers or whatever. So this time it was Frank Ocean. <gasps> he looked like it, but you know, I mean, <laughs> the most ignorant part of this whole thing is they were fighting. Over a parking space. Exactly. As all the faces in here go gasp. These two idiots were fighting over a parking space. And you, the, here's the messed up part about it. The parking space. It doesn't matter. Because he was fighting for parking space. At Frank Ocean's. Um, place. So so basically you're fighting the owner. For a parking space at his spot. Really? Really? And I'm not talking about. Yo, man, I was here first. I'm talking about let's throw some bows. Are you kidding me? And, of course, because this can't get any wilder. Somebody else got hurt. Frank Ocean got hurt. He cut his hand. He cut his hand, so now he can't play the piano with two hands at the Grammys. Like I wanted to hear Frank Ocean anyway. But that's beside the point. Exactly. Who was, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter who he is. It's the fact that this dude... This this person from the state that I live in, about 55 miles down south, can't keep his sorry, young, terrible ass out of trouble. And it's so annoying that you have all these kids who look up to this dude, and this dude gets in trouble 
once every two months. Sometimes once a month. I don't know if he just loves attention. But I mean, he you get in a fight and then to top it all off, I guess they call the cops or whatever. And of course, because we can't actually communicate in normal ways such as on TV and stuff, Frank Ocean hit up his beautiful Twitter account saying, I was in a fight with Chris Brown. I mean, and excuse me, I got jumped by Chris and a couple of guys. He wishes his dog was there because I guess his dog was going to help him because that's two to six. Um, you know, and then I cut my finger so now I can't play with two hands at the Grammys. First of all, man, if you now, did you cut your finger like that joint's coming off? Or did you cut have a little cut where it hurts you? Look, stop being a punk. Play at the Grammys, number one. I don't care what it is. Sometimes you can't, you just can't see here and I cut my finger. What, did he cut it off? Now, if you cut it off, it's completely different. It's kind of hard to play a piano with nine fingers. But you're not going to sit here and just be like, yo, man, I got jumped by Chris Brown and some people. First of all, you got jumped by 125-pound Chris Brown and probably his 130-pound friends in Big Bertha, you know, that he, he his bodyguard. If, if furthermore, who's going to admit they got jumped by Chris Brown? Really? If, first of all, if I got jumped by Chris Brown, nine times out of ten, Chris Brown probably won't end the jump. He probably sent his boys to jump him. And further, if he was in it, I'm getting one lick. He gonna have a shiner, and I may get beat down, but he's getting his. But more importantly, I am sick of these people. Like Chris, I'm sick of these stars just feel like they can do what they want to do, and then turn around and be like, "I love the kids. You should do what I say." Yada. I'm over it. I'm over Chris Brown. I'm over Chris Brown. And it's, I just want to meet this dude so I can be like, will you stop being ignorant? Just stop being ignorant. Who cares? Who cares? I feel like I want to burn like 50 copies of his album, but I'm not paying that dude for that. You crazy? I'll just, I'll just get a bootleg and I'll burn that. So I paid 20 cents for the DVD. But look, real talk. I'm sick of this dude just doing what he wants to do. And I'm sick of him driving the VA's name into the dirt. We got enough issues in Virginia. Then have some I want to be grown up kid who used to run it with Joe, who Jules Santana. And then talk about how he want to have sex with girls in different ways. And then allow a 16 year old girl to buy it. Ignore it. I'm over it. I'm That dude, I mean, and the sad thing about it is. The sad thing about it is, is that the dude was actually cool when he came out. I mean, I hope he got into some drugs because I would understand the stupidity that he's doing. Give me an explanation. But Father I'm concerned, Chris Brown sucks, and I'm going to keep talking about him. And I don't care who he is. I mean, I almost, yo, know, when he left Twitter, I was happy. But he's back on it. He's so stupid. I'm over it. Him and Rihanna can go and do whatever with how many kids they want to have. I'm over it. People don't listen to Chris Brown. Tell your kids stop listening to Chris Brown. And as long as he keeps doing stupid stuff, you're going to hear me talk about the stupid stuff he does. And I hope one day, one day, he just stopped doing stupid stuff. Big rules, smash, I'm out. Ain't no has to walk his J. I tell you, Calm Banks and Big Rube just did what we call rant, boy, because y'all too. <laughs> Tonight, just yeah, yeah. Hey, your mic's off, man. I cut it off already. Y'all, y'all went in tonight, but you know what? I appreciate the passion. And I'm glad he's in my mic now. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to just kind of do my thank yous. I want to first thank Desiree Monique for hitting us on the fan page uh, and 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 putting all those notes. I, I got them. Unfortunately, I couldn't read them all, but I got them. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank uh, Miss Toriana for joining us as she does from time to time. Thank. Uh, author uh, author Charisma for joining us who comes in last Monday of each month appreciate that also want to thank Kenny Spurlock for bringing Legal Shield to the Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J listeners and hopefully uh, those people out there who heard something that uh, they could use to benefit their families they'll get in contact with Kenny and go ahead and get uh, some of those services it sounds like some good stuff to me I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity and do my rant, my closing, and uh, 
first of all, folks like to call me a conspiracy theorist. Uh, I, I guess I'm okay with that. I don't really care for it, but you know, I, I'm kind of used to it. To me, it's what folks call those of us who re- refuse to accept the status quo as is, and we question what appears to be the way it is. I guess that's the definition of conspiracy theorists. If that's the case, then that's what I am. You ever wonder if the media puts out nonsense to distract folks from real stuff? I say yes. The world was talking about whether Beyonce lip synced on the same day the debt ceiling was extended and Hillary Clinton spoke on Benghazi. Same day. On the day after the inauguration of the President of the United States of this country, We were captivated by whether Beyonce lip sync. Now, obviously, I have issues with this being a story. Again, when the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, finally speaks after four months on what happened in Benghazi at the embassy there, we talk about Beyonce. Instead of being interested in the breakdown of information that led to the deaths of the American diplomat and others, they are telling us that Beyonce lip sync. On the day... The newly re-inaugurated president comes to an agreement with Congress about agreeing to raise the debt ceiling so that we as a country can maintain our worldwide credit rating. The big news is that Beyonce lip sync. Also the big story last week, and we talked this one to death, was the Mante Teo story. My crew and me ain't going to agree on this, you know, but that's not why I'm bringing this up. The more I hear about it, though, the more I'm convinced that you know that dude is was in on it but when i first learned about it it was on the morning news it was given four minutes sandwiched between the head of the national rifle association telling us how giving teachers guns in the classroom is a good idea and how the head of the federal aviation association was telling us that they had to ground a bunch of commercial planes because they're not safe so yeah you heard it right a college student getting duped by his homie then lying about it himself is hard news I gotta wonder sometimes if old timers like Charlie Rose or Diane Sawyer or Brian Williams grow weary of TMZing of our news broadcasts. And there lies the problem, people. Again, I get called a conspiracy theorist, usually in somewhat a condescending tone, because I question nonsense like this. My conspiracy theorist theory is that the powers that be, whoever they are, do not want the masses in tune with real news. They don't want you to analyze news because then you might question what you're analyzing. And if we wasn't bullied into believing that all Muslims were bad and they killed people on 9-11, do you really think we'd have gone to war in Iraq searching for what wasn't there to begin with? While encouraging free thought and education, we continue to see our children and even us adults dumbed down with this silliness. It's like shining a shiny object in front of a baby and they take the bait every time. They use our culture's obsession with drama and carnage against us. Consider the biggest stories of the last couple of weeks. Lance Armstrong admitted to lying and gave Oprah big ratings on own. Mante Teo got punked by his homeboy and Katie Couric reaped the, ba- the ratings bonanza. And of course, Beyonce committing the grand sin of lip syncing her own voice. I don't think anybody questions whether she can sing. We've all heard her live enough to know she has an amazing voice, but really, the drama, seriously... I just don't understand why this is news worthy of the constant news cycle that I've seen in the last week. Probably the best national anthem performance the last 50 years was lip synced by Whitney Houston at the Super Bowl back in 91. Giants won that game just after the U.S. dominated Iraq for invading Kuwait. So maybe just maybe we were so enamored by Whitney's performance then to distract us from the real news going on that day. Reminds me of the days of slavery when Massa would snap and lose his damn mind if he ever caught a slave reading. Even Massa knew back then that knowledge was power and the thought of trying to educate ourselves on real stuff would get your backlashed. The ironic part is, if I had a post about Beyonce lip syncing on Facebook, it would blow up. But if I had a status on the debt ceiling or Benghazi, it would barely register a single like. That's the mur. Marcus is unrelated rant. It ain't got nothing to do with what we're here talking about tonight. It's the end of the show. I want to thank everybody for hanging in there with us. We went way over the night, and we appreciate the love we got. I want to say peace to all the stars and all the squares. In the abundance of water, the fool is thirsty. Those are the words of Bob Marley. 
Ain't no half-stepping Marcus J. Be back next Monday night. Peace.